Hey developers, I'm Kamesh, Lead Developer Advocate at Snowflake. Tired of switching context between Snowflake's web UI and your terminal? Let's change that. In today's world of infrastructure as a code and automated workflows, clicking through UI to manage your data platform is so is today. That's where Snowflake CLI comes in. Bringing in the power of Snowflake right onto your terminal where you're working. In today's demo, we'll explore how to install Snowflake CLI using OS package managers, just like any other dev tool. Use simple CLI commands to create Snowflake objects, no more repetitive UI clicks. Set up Git integration, your data infrastructure deserves the same CI CD love as your code. Execute SQL and Python scripts directly from Git, perfect for automated deployments. And lastly, we'll wire everything together using GitHub Actions for a true data ops. Ready to transform your terminal into Snowflake Automation Command Center? Your terminal is waiting. All right, developers, let's kick off our Snowflake journey by getting the essential CLI tool set up. First thing first, open up your web browser and navigate to the Snowflake CLI documentation page. Don't worry about searching. I've added the direct link in the video description for easy access. This documentation page is your one-stop resource for everything related to Snowflake CLI. Take a moment to select the right installer for your operating system. Whether you're on Linux, Mac, or Windows, Snowflake has got you covered. We recommend the package installers as the one to use for any OS. Since I'm on Mac today, you will take advantage of the streamlined Mac OS package installer. Simply click the download and follow the installation instructions. No command line gymnastics is required. To ensure everything is working correctly, let's verify a step with quick version check command on our terminal, snow dash dash version. And the version 3.1 appears. That's exactly the version or the IR that we need for this demo to work its magic. When you see this version number, you're all good. With our CLI locked and loaded, we're all set to dive into really exciting stuff. Trust me, what's going to come next is where things get really interesting. Let's rock and roll. Snowflake organizes all its components within databases. Think of them as the highest level containers for all your data objects. Now we are going to create a database and schema to store our Snowflake Git objects. And if you're thinking we'll be using the traditional Snowflake SQL worksheet for these commands, well, I got an exciting surprise in store for you. We need to use a role with permissions to create databases, schemas, and Git repositories. You will just use account admin to keep things simple. In real production environments, you would want to use users with the appropriate access levels. Let's set up a workspace. We'll create all Git resources under a database called my Git repos and a schema named GitHub. We'll use a varrows called mygitwh. To make things easier later, you'll save these names as environment variables in our terminal. Although creating a warehouse is not mandatory for this demo, let's create a new virtual arrows for completeness. Let's group all Git resources in a database, my underscore git underscore repos. And finally, it's always recommended to group related database resources under a schema. In this case, let's group all our GitHub repositories under a schema called GitHub. Wow, look at that, no clicking around in the UI. We did everything right from our terminal. And this is just the beginning. Ever wondered how you could integrate your favorite Git tools with Snowflake? Well, that's exactly what we'll cover in step three as we set up our Git repositories. Now, let's set up our Git repository object, our first step towards automation. Think of this as a bridge that connects Snowflake to our Git repository, similar to an external stage. Base part, once connected, we can run our SQL and Python scripts directly from Git, making it easy to maintain and execute our code all in one place. This setup brings together the best of both the worlds, Git's robust version control, and Snowflake's powerful data processing capabilities, creating a foundation for streamlined automated data pipelines. Before we proceed with the Git setup, let's configure a few more environment variables. These will make our CLI commands more concise and manageable by providing easy substitutions when working with Snow Git commands. This also helps us avoid typing long complex command strings repeatedly. Let us run the command to create the Git integration. For the origin, I'll use my fork. 
Since it's a private repository, I need to configure a secret. So I'm going to give yes. I'm going to leave this to default. Give my username and my GitHub pat. Finally, allow Snowflake CLI to create a default API integration object. Now that we have created our Git repository and connected, we will learn how to manage and interact with the repository using Snow Git commands. When working with Snowflake objects and resources, it's best to practice using fully qualified names to prevent any ambiguity or naming conflicts. Before we proceed with common Git operations, let's first set up an environment variable to store the fully qualified name of our Git repository. We can fetch or refresh the latest from our Git repository using the command snow git fetch repository name. To list all the branches in our Git repositories, we can use snow git list branches repository name. Similarly, we can also list all the tags. And finally, we can also list files in a specific branch, including a pattern to match the files. In this case, I'm listing all the SQL files that is available in my repository. Additional git commands and options can be explored using the snow git dash dash help command. Now that we have familiarized ourselves with common git repository operations, let's move on to execute some SQL and Python scripts from a specific branch. Before we execute our SQL and Python scripts, we need to set up some crucial environment variables. These variables will ensure our commands run smoothly with different settings. The command will execute all the SQL and Python scripts from the DE folder of the branch, in our case, the main branch. We can safely ignore this warning. The scripts created a table named todos in the todo app db database under the data schema. It then loaded the data from the todos.csv file located in the data folder of the same branch. Before we move to the next step, let's quickly do a sanity check to ensure we have all the data we need. There we go, we got all the data we loaded. Data in isolation is useless until we transform it into actionable insights through applications. By leveraging tools like Streamlit for seamless data visualization and app presentation, combined with Snowflake's Git integration for streamlined deployment, we can quickly bring our ideas to life. Let's see this in action by deploying our simple to-do demo, a perfect example of how these powerful tools enable us to transition from raw code and data to a live interactive web application with minimal effort. Let us navigate to the app folder and run the snow streamlit command to deploy the application. You can access the application from the URL shown in the output of the command. That was impressive. We accomplished quite a bit with just a few CLI commands, bringing our data to life visually. How cool it would be to automate these steps via CI CD workflow. I know what you're thinking. That's exactly where we are going to explore next. No DevOps journey is complete without continuous integration and continuous deployment. In short, CI-CD. Fortunately, Snowflake provides official CLI support through the GitHub Marketplace as an action, making automation seamless. Integrating Snowflake CLI into a GitHub Actions workflow is straightforward and powerful. As you can see in my snow.yaml, a GitHub Action workflow file, I've added the Snowflake CLI from GitHub Marketplace. Let's see this in action. We'll make a small update to the Streamlit application changing my to-dos to list of to-dos. Now I'm going to commit and I push it to my fork. Once it's pushed that, the GitHub action should kick off. Let us go and verify that in my repository. GH repo view. It opens my repository here and you see this GitHub action has already started. Let's go to the actions tab. I see this update title thing, which we just pushed now has started. And it, it takes few minutes for the whole thing to run. Let's wait for this to run. Our GitHub action is successful now. Let's go and verify the application. You can find the application URL right now as part of your actions log. I'm going to click this to open the application. Since the application went on idle, it's starting right now. And you should see the refreshed app saying list of to-dos as part of the title. And there we see our update has been pushed into the GitHub repository and actions triggered and an application got updated as part of the CI CD workflow. 
This seamless update process demonstrates how CI/CD pipelines streamline development and deployment. With Snowflake CLI, you can extend the same powerful automation practices to your data pipelines and data ops workflow, ensuring all changes from code to data transformations reach production efficiently and reliably. With Snowflake CLI, you have transformed your terminal into a streamlined command center where the data infrastructure lives alongside your code. Modern data platforms deserve modern tooling. By embracing the CLI, you are bringing in software engineering best practices to data infrastructure while saving valuable time. Use these skills to build automated pipelines, streamline your workflows, and scale with confidence. It's time to put your new Snowflake CLI powers at work. Check the description below for Snowflake trial account signup, demo sources used in this tutorial, Snowflake's official documentation, GitHub repositories for Snowflake CLI, and Snowflake CLI GitHub Action. Please don't forget to start our GitHub repositories and share your automation success stories with the community. Happy coding and happy automation.